It's Rebecca Vardy's account. Wagatha Christie. Wagatha Christie. Wagatha Christie. Wagatha Christie. A war of the wags. Wags, a finster, and a lawsuit for the social media girlies. I mean it when I say this case is my Roman Empire. And with Colleen Rooney dropping a new tell-all docuseries, we know more about this case than ever. So sit down, grab some popcorn, because we are getting into it. The doco is great, but it only really tells Colleen's side of the story. So I have taken it upon myself. I have consulted court documents. I have done my research, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Before we get into it, let me introduce you to today's characters. The star of the show, we have Wagatha Christie herself, Colleen Rooney. Colleen Rooney is high school sweetheart of former England captain and Manchester United's all-time leading goal scorer, Wayne Rooney. Wayne plays very little role in this story. He played very little role in the documentary, but she wouldn't be Wagatha Christie if it wasn't for him. One thing to know about Colleen is that she is an OG. She has been with this man since high school. They met when they were 12. They started dating at 16. She has been around longer than he has been a public figure. She went through it all with him. Respect to her. And then we have the plaintiff in our story, Mrs. Rebecca Vardy. Rebecca Vardy is married to Jamie Vardy, also a footballer, also doesn't have a hell of a lot of relevance in this story. Vardy and Rooney used to play for England together, and while their manager says that they were good friends on and off the field, Mr. Wayne Rooney refuted this in court. He told the court under oath that Jamie was a teammate for the national team. He is not someone I have ever particularly been friends with on a social level. Yikes. The other key character in this story, who many people forget is also a wag, is Caroline Watt. Caroline's husband, Steve, used to play for Chelsea, and out of the three husbands, he actually plays the biggest role in this story. In her now infamous tweet, Colleen referred to Rebecca as someone she trusted, but don't get it mistaken, I wouldn't call them friends. The pair met at the Euros in 2016, and this is the only time they were ever seen in public together until they ended up in court. On the 15th of January 2017, Colleen Rooney sent Rebecca Vardy a WhatsApp message congratulating her on the birth of her new child. This is then the same conversation in which Rebecca asks Colleen if she has Instagram. This, my friends, is when she followed the Finster. According to Colleen, the Wagatha Christie story begins in September 2017, when a then 31-year-old Wayne Rooney was not only caught drink driving, but he was caught drink driving in a woman's car who was not Colleen's, and it became a huge scandal. At the time, Colleen was in Spain with her dad and her kids. She was pregnant and understandably was furious. So when she came home, she went to stay with her mum. While staying at her mum's house, she posted a photo of herself with her kids to her private Instagram, which marks the first post in our Finster story. Now, I need to give context here. We are talking full Finster level of private. We aren't talking like a few thousand followers. We're talking maybe 300 people max. This is a private account. Colleen Rooney was using this account the way my mum uses Instagram. When she pressed publish on this post, she had no idea that this sub-1000 Instagram follower account would one day land her in court. This is the story of how a social media post led to a libel trial in the High Court. Rebecca, who was acquaintances with Colleen at the time but was by no means friends, texted her when the story about Wayne broke and offered her condolences and offered her to stay at their family home. The next day, the Finster post was leaked to The Sun. Colleen really opens up about how tough this was, which I think is something that sort of got lost when the Wagatha Christie story first broke. She already had three kids, she had a fourth on the way, and she's dealing with Wayne Rooney just being an absolute flog. So having to deal with this all publicly would have been very tough, particularly when you think about how long they had been together at this time. A month later, we have our second Finster leak, when Colleen, still in the wars with Wayne, was in Barbados with the kids. It was Wayne's birthday, so she did the most millennial mum thing ever, and she took to her private Instagram to make an Instagram post to Wayne from the kids. Again, you guessed it, this post was leaked to The Sun. After the second post was leaked, Colleen took to Instagram to call out her followers for being a bunch of snakes. She begged for privacy and was just like, please stop leaking my shit. At this point, you could argue that she was a bit of an idiot for continuing to post on the account, and even Wayne suggested that she should probably stop posting. In her defense, I don't think she's asking for too much for wanting to have a tiny little Instagram account with a few of her close friends to share personal memories, to share things. She's moving all over the world following Wayne playing football. She wants to just share these memories with her friends and family. And I think when we're talking full Finster levels of less than a thousand followers, celebrities do deserve that level of privacy. It would be a totally different story and I would have no sympathy if she was complaining about things that she was posting publicly that would then becoming tabloid news. 
but that is just not the case. Over the next two years, Colleen continued to have stories leaked from her Finster to The Sun. According to court documents, there were at least nine articles published that were based on information obtained from her Finster and another one that didn't make it to print. All of this based on allegedly leaked information. While Colleen and Wayne were trying to work things out, she was being strategic about what she was posting publicly, and honestly, good for her. For Halloween, she posted a family photo all wearing matching pyjamas to her private Instagram that included Wayne, but a similar photo without him to her public Instagram of just her and the kids. Of course, this was promptly mentioned in The Sun a few days later, accompanied by a very weird headline about how he's been allowed back into the marital bed. Yuck. Colleen again took to Instagram to slam her followers for leaking her stories. The grass strikes again. I put that picture on wondering if it would appear in that horrible newspaper. You're accepted of one of my friends. If you really needed the money that bad, you could have always asked instead of being sly. According to court records, Rebecca Vardy also messaged her on this day. Oh my God, what the fuck is wrong with people? Why have they taken that one of you and the kids and not one of Wayne in bed? That would have been an even better story in their eyes. Two eye-rolling emojis. Dickheads. Hope you're okay. Two days later, in a separate WhatsApp message, Rebecca Vardy suggests that Colleen might have been hacked. Even after the pair moved to America for Wayne Rooney to play in the MLS, the leaks continued. Not even the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean could stop these leaks. Interestingly, while they were in America, Rebecca Vardy always kept in touch with Colleen. The real catalyst for Colleen going full detective mode is when she got into a minor accident in Washington, a story that by the time it made it to the sun was blown massively out of proportion. At the time, she took to her private Instagram to say that someone was again selling stories to that scum of a paper. And this is also the first time she went public with her allegations. She tweeted, Thank you for the messages asking if I am okay. The car crash story was completely wrong. I wasn't involved in a crash. The car was damaged by another car. Someone on my private Instagram seen the picture and is telling or selling stories to a certain newspaper. It's happened several times now over the past couple of years. It's sad to think someone who I have accepted to follow me is betraying me either for money or to keep a relationship with the press. After this first public tweet, we have another WhatsApp message, this time between Rebecca and her agent, Caroline Watt. There's a whole conversation you can pause to read through, but the most important bit of evidence here is where Caroline Watt ends the conversation by saying it wasn't someone she trusted, it was me. Colleen had her suspicions that it was Rebecca leaking the stories to the press, largely because she already had a relationship with them. She'd been writing columns for them previously, and all of the stories about her in The Sun were overwhelmingly positive, which is just not something that really happens with tabloids. But she wasn't just going to come right out and say it. No. Colleen was a detective. She needed proof. In February 2019, Colleen unfollowed Rebecca on Instagram and deleted her as a follower. Interestingly, the league stopped. We don't have an exact date for when this happened, but according to court records, it was on or around the first week of February. This is interesting because by February 6, Caroline had already noticed. Rebecca and Caroline have a whole conversation about it. They know it's happened, but Rebecca doesn't want to be weird. She needs an excuse to talk to Colleen. But instead of coming up with, I don't know, any excuse, their husbands both play football, they're both in the public eye, they've both got kids. No, she suggests that she should message Colleen about Rosie. For context, Rosie is Colleen's little sister who had Rett syndrome and died when she was 14. Instead, Caroline encouraged her to make up some message about charity instead. And that's exactly what she did. On the same day that she messaged Colleen, she continues her conversation with Caroline and just seems really nervous about the whole thing. They have a big conversation which finishes with the line, she better not me off, X. Colleen eventually replies to Rebecca saying that she's just really struggling with being in the US, but Rebecca is still really skeptical. She tells Caroline that she thinks Colleen has cottoned on and she's just a bit wary of the whole thing. Not long after this interaction, Rebecca finally asks Colleen why she's unfollowed her. Colleen makes an excuse and they follow each other again. If Colleen wasn't already suspicious it was Rebecca, this was a huge red flag for her. According to court documents, Colleen said, Instagram does not notify you when someone unfollows or blocks you and Becky's Instagram account would have had 400,000 followers at the time and following around a thousand other accounts. So I thought she must have been searching for me or going out of her way to look at my private Instagram account to realize I had stopped following her and that I had removed her as a follower. I suspected the reason why Becky would have been actively looking for my private Instagram account was for the purposes of seeing whether material was on there to pass on to the sun. After another attempted leak story called The Babysitter Inquiry on March 27, Colleen finally tells her and Wayne's publicist that she has a feeling it might be Rebecca leaking the stories. 
This story never actually made it to print, but this is an important detail because this is the first time that Colleen had actually told someone her fears. She tells the publicist not to say anything, but asks if there's any way that we can find out who the source was. On March 29, her publicist replies, Hey C, I've done a bit of digging and for information only, turns out Rebecca Vardy is very close to Rebecca Newton, whose actual name is Vanessa Newton, that was just a mistake, who is the editor of Sun on Sunday. Apparently she also knows Dan Wooten, who has done lots of the gossip pieces. She played out her career very much in the Sun, in brackets, lots of exclusives to them, and on the whole has only had good press. Now, that doesn't mean it's certainly her, and I wouldn't want to accuse anyone, but it plays into the theory as she does have relationships there. Maybe delete her off your Insta, XX. And this, my friends, is where the sting operation starts. At this point, we need to give credit to Colleen Rooney for just getting her ducks in a row. She really thought long and hard about this, and I actually feel really bad that this ended in court because she, at least in her opinion, did her due diligence here. So what she did is she made sure that nobody other than Rebecca Vardy's account could see her Instagram stories. Honestly, this is incredible detective skills. I love this. This is when she posted a fake story about going to Mexico to find out a bit more about gender selection, something that she knew was easy tabloid fodder. The story, which was later leaked to the press, was seen by one Instagram account. You guessed it. It was Rebecca Vardy's account. Later on in court, Rebecca denied leaking this story, but did accept that Caroline Watt, who had access to her Instagram, could have been the one to leak it. Between August 15 and October 9, Rooney posted more than 50 Instagram stories, ranging from really mundane things to things that were obvious tabloid fodder. This was all part of stage two of her sting operation. Only one story from this, which was a false story about a flooded basement, made it to the sun. Interestingly, throughout the entire sting operation, there was only one single Instagram story that Rebecca Vardy's account didn't view. And like, just think about that. Think about all of the Instagram accounts that you follow. How many could you safely say you watch every single one of their Instagram stories? Surely not many. And this, my friends, brings us to October 9, which is Judgment Day for Miss Rebecca Vardy. Colleen takes to Twitter to share the now infamous post. For a few years now, someone who I trusted to follow me on my private Instagram account has been consistently informing the Sun newspaper of my private Instagram posts and stories. There has been so much information given to them about me, my friends, and my family, all without my permission or knowledge. After a long time of trying to figure out who it could be, for various reasons, I had a suspicion. To try and prove this, I came up with an idea. I blocked everyone from viewing my Instagram stories except one account. Those on my private account must have been wondering why I haven't had any stories on there for a while. Over the past five months, I have posted a series of false stories to see if they made their way into the Sun newspaper. And you know what? They did. The story about gender selection in Mexico, the story about me returning to TV, and then the latest story about the basement flooding in my new house. It's been tough keeping it to myself and not making any comment at all, especially when the stories have been leaked. However, I had to. Now I know for certain which account slash individual it's come from. I have saved and screenshotted all of the original stories, which clearly show just one person has viewed them. It's Rebecca Vardy's account. As is to be expected, this blew up immediately. This was huge noise, everybody was losing their mind, and Caroline and Rebecca were quick to go into damage control. Caroline was first to find it and immediately text it to Rebecca saying, message her now and ask what the fuck this is, X. Caroline then sends Rebecca a message telling her exactly word for word what to say to Colleen, and Rebecca copies it, quite literally copy-paste, and posts it online. Rebecca messaged Colleen on October 9 and basically said, if you had told me earlier I could have done something about this, lots of people have access to my Instagram. But, according to court records, the only two people that had access to her Instagram at that time were her and Caroline. Rebecca then issued a statement which was quite literally copy-paste what Caroline told her to say. A few months later, on February 13, 2020, Rebecca went on ITV's Loose Women, which is a very weird name for a show, to tell her side of the story. I ended up with severe anxiety attacks. Um, I ended up in hospital three times. The libel case was officially launched on June 23, 2020, in which Vardy claimed she suffered extreme stress, hurt, anxiety and embarrassment as a result of the publication of the post and the events which followed. When the parameters of the court case were set, it was not looking good for Colleen. The judge agreed that an ordinary reader would see Rooney's post as an allegation that Vardy personally 
had frequently abused her status as a trusted follower of Miss Rooney's personal Instagram account. Now we jump forward to February 8 of 2022 when the case finally returned to court. Explosive text messages were read out in this hearing in which Rebecca Vardy allegedly referred to Rooney as a, quote, nasty bitch and a c***. There's so much missing evidence in this case. Rebecca claims that six months of her text messages were lost when she changed over phones. Colleen also lost messages in the same way, but was able to get them from her agent's phone. But Rebecca couldn't do that. If you're wondering why, it's because Caroline Watt's phone was at the bottom of the North Sea. This is something she didn't tell anyone until four months later. Hilariously, this prompted a scene in court where it was alleged that crucial evidence was sitting at the bottom of Davy Jones' locker, to which Rebecca Vardy replied, who's Davy Jones? I am screaming. The boat incident drew up so much controversy that Caroline's husband actually has had to come out and explain it for himself. And you'll never guess which publication he spoke to about this. The Sun. Caroline had been standing by the railings taking a video of a seal on her phone when the boat made a jolt, prompting her to drop the device into the water. To quote her husband, As far as I was concerned, the court case was the end of it, but it's being brought up again by people in the public eye. I'm sick of reading and hearing inaccurate things about it. This wasn't a luxury yacht in Dubai. It was a drizzly day in Aberdeenshire. The sea was choppy and Caroline dropped her phone purely by accident. Iconic. In total, the trial lasted two weeks and we got 313 pages of evidence out of it. On July 29, Rebecca officially lost the case with the judge siding with Colleen and ordering Rebecca to pay 90% of Colleen's legal costs. But it gets better. The final nail in this coffin is that Wagatha Christie has since been trademarked. Not by Colleen, not by Wagatha Christie herself. Not by Dan Atkinson, the comedian who actually coined the term. It was by Rebecca Vardy. 